and tonight's episode we're going to have a lot of fun this is the shooters roll podcast made by fans for the fans and i'm with real fans tonight for this episode recording uh firstly my co-host t how's it going yo man this is my favorite part of the week time to talk basketball i'm great man how are you how are you having you on and joining us tonight my cousin how wheezy how you going mate what up good 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 to talk ball good to talk ball with the fellas it's been a long time i see you're representing la mate represent the greatest uh, franchise (laughs) in all sports this week so you know back your section and speaking of the greatest franchise uh it's it's my boy rj the franchise. What's up, boys? Going three point yeah, yeah, pretty good, boys. Pretty good. Finally, this day has arrived. Can't, couldn't wait for this day to come. Very good. You know why? Because we're going to have, like I said from the top of the show, a lot of fun tonight. We are going to debate who is the Ooh, like real it. GOAT, the greatest ever basketball player to play in the NBA. And you know what? This is going to be the debate to, de- to end all debates. Um, we'll set some ground rules first, you know. Um, firstly, uh, this has come about because recently in the past month, ESPN released their top 100 players list of all time. Um, and just to recap, I'll do the top 10 in reverse order. At 10 was the Diesel, Shaquille O'Neal. Nine was the late, great Kobe Bryant. Eight, the big fundamental, Tim Duncan. Seven, Larry Bird. Six, Wilt Chamberlain. Five, Magic Johnson. Four, Bill Russell. Three, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Two, LeBron James. And number one, his Ennis, Michael Jordan. Now, out of, that's the ESPN top, uh, top 10 list. Um, for our debate tonight, uh, each of us has selected a couple of players that we are going to make a case for regarding who is the greatest of all time. And we're going to do it to a timer. I brought my timer tonight. If anyone can see that in YouTube world, uh, we're going to set a time of two minutes for each person to talk about their candidate for the greatest of all time. And you know what? Let's get straight into it. I'm going to jump right into it. Um, three point demon, RJ. I'm going to start with you, mate. Um, who is your first player you're going to talk about? And your time starts now. First, I'll talk about number one, Michael Jordan. Uh, well, this guy. I'll give you the facts. Six titles in eight years. Six and zero in the finals. No game seven in the finals. Uh, Saving uh, Nike's uh, upcoming upstart company. Once they put, in, they put his name on it, it blew up. Um, his shoes, to this day, still generating up to half a billion dollars still. And he's not even playing. Um, what makes him the greatest is that, not because of the stats, but he's spectacular. He gets you all in and eyeing the whole time when you watch him. He's got charisma. He, he can, he's outgoing, so when he gets interviews, when people talk to him, he's, out, he's outgoing. He can be approached. Um, his own peers are even, you know, even riding the coattails of Jordan, saying, even Larry Bird saying that, well, that was God, this guy's Michael Jordan. You don't hear a lot of players saying that about any player these days, really. Uh, Charles Barkley said it too when he both got interviewed by Oprah, saying that he's got it. You know, he's got everything. You know, his charisma has got... He looks great on camera. He, he's got the personality. Um, and Jordan created the sneaker brand, the sneakerhead world, if you think about it. It started with his shoes, his brand. Um, you know, shoe culture didn't start with Air Maxes, really. It's the Jordan brand. It's the Jordan shoes that started it, if you think about it. Um, Ten scoring titles, 14 NBA All-Star selections. He won the titles in the toughest era of basketball, if you think about it. Um, and he's a philanthropist. So, yeah, he's donating money back to his hometown in Charlotte and built a hospital there for the, for the people who are not, not well off and to help them with their um, health and so forth. Um, and lastly, even the people that don't know Michael Jordan, 
your grandmother, your great grandmother. They don't know nothing about the NBA, but if you say Michael Jordan, they'll say it. They'll, they'll know who Michael Jordan is. Time's up, buddy. <laughs> Damn. How do you turn this off? Hold on. All right. <laughs> All right, fellas. Uh, any rebuttal to the one player considered the greatest of all time? Yeah, I'll go first. Yeah. So, so yeah, of course, Michael Jordan is one of the greatest. We've we basically covered him, but I think uh, RJ. I don't know if you've got the memo. We were talking about basketball, not actually what they do off the court. <laughs> so, so D Swizzle, is that part of the the argument itself? What they do off the court, or is this on the court? Uh, well, I was just more speaking of on the court. This is about you know the greatest NBA basketball player. Of course. Yep. Yes. Yes. So, so I think RJ did a disservice to MJ because he started talking about the shoes, and then he talking about his community service. It, the, the question was basketball. What's Not, impressive though is the scoring titles. Yep. And the of championships. Course. The six and O is pretty impressive, right? That's that's impressive. Six and O. But the six and O is it, it's a bit. Um, if Jordan had a chance to get to the finals every year, you know, and you give any any NBA player, any any player in any comp, if he's one game to win the championship, you take the game all, all the time, right? So, you know, like you see other players make the finals a lot, but they don't they don't win it, and. And we're saying it counts against them, you know. So, although Jordan made it six times and he won six times, he, if he Correct. got there, if he got there by himself without without a good team, and then lost in the finals, you know, w- would we say he's the greatest? Because, look, RJ brought up the the point, the arguable point that uh, Jordan played in the toughest era of the NBA. Um, I suppose the 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 counter the counter viewpoint is that Jordan played in an era where there were no super teams, there were no super friends teams. So, in terms of the challenge against the Chicago Bulls being, you know, matched up against difficult opponents, the counter argument or my counter argument is he didn't have it. He still had an All Star, a great top five player in Scottie Pippen playing next to him. So, if anything. He had a better team than the rest of the league. Thoughts, Jay? Well, he yeah, they they drafted Pippen, but he made Pippen along with his teammates. He made his players be- better mentally. He gave them the mental toughness to be a great team. You won't have that. You won't if you don't have that. You won't have it. You won't win at all. So. His greatness alone and his work ethic alone, he led by example. And it rolled on to his teammates. And the, all I got to say is watch the, the last dance and you know it, it's there. So, and, and to T's point, um, well, the guy is still, irrele- still relevant today. So I'm just going to, ca- I'll count the encore. I'm not, the encore is not a problem. But if, you, if you're talking about still the greatest of all time, so meaning not just the 90s era, but still today, People are still talking about you. That means you're doing something outside of it too. And the stuff that you've done on court is just as great as what you've done off the court. And that's why you're still being talk- talked about. Oh, mic drop. <laughs> mic drop, indeed. All right. <laughs> strong points there. Strong close there, Jay. I'm going to move on now to Pal. Pal, who you got up first as the greatest of all time. <clears throat> and we're going... I think uh, Jay nailed it on the head. I mean, I guess the consensus is there's generally what two schools of thoughts on the uh, greatest players of all time. And obviously, Jay's talked about Jordan. Uh, second one, spoiler alert, not really spoiler alert, uh, is obviously LeBron. Um, I guess the person I want to talk about is if they didn't exist, um, I'll go with number 10 on your list, Dex, uh, Shaquille O'Neal. And that's purely in the context of domination. I know we talk about Jordan dominating the game, making everyone look, I guess, like little boys on the court against a full-grown man, but I want to talk about Shaq, I, especially in that three-peak. Just off the numbers alone, the first championship, 38 points per game, 16.7 boards, 2.3 assists, 
the next year, 33 points per game, 15.8 rebounds, five assists. And in the 2002 era, it was 36 points per game, uh, 12 rebounds and four assists. And he went 4-0. In that three series, by the three peak, uh, the worst he ever went was 4-2. And I, I mean, in terms of just utter domination, I don't know anyone who could have stopped that man, just the sheer combination of agility, size and strength. You, you couldn't stop him. Once he was in that paint, just one dribble, two dribbles, he was backing you up. He was just dunking over you. Baby hook shot. I couldn't think of anyone else who just dominated from start to finish. And the numbers justify it. He was a three-time MVP in that series. Goes on to uh, Miami. Obviously doesn't get as much uh, accolades and raw numbers, but still goes on to win a ring. So uh, Shaq is up there for my greatest of all time in the context of complete and other dominance by a single player. Well done. And with six seconds to spare... How about them apples? All right, boys. Oh, sorry. Let me turn this off again. Rebuttals. Who's yep. up first? I'm up first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on to die, brother. So yeah, so 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 Paul, you said he was unstoppable, but um, when he went up against uh, Kareem in in the finals when he was playing. No, sorry, not, not Kareem. Um, okay. The dream, the dream. I can't yeah, say. My bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so. So when he was in Orlando, he was young buck, came in, played the finals, and he pretty much got owned. They got swept. So he, he lost uh, he lost to that in the finals. So in that round, he wasn't he wasn't unstoppable. And uh, the other the other thing I have, I don't want to take it away from the other guys, but uh, his his free throw was suspect. So <laughs> <laughs> they did that. look. They don't pay you max money to shoot free throws. They they pay him to dunk it. But I guess to answer your question against uh, against the dream, I think you put it. Perfectly. He, he was quite a young buck. Uh, you know, he was still quite new to his craft in terms of playing against seasoned players, real, real men. Um, he was, what, three years into the league at that point, going against arguably one of the only original MVP and defensive MVP, uh, defensive players of the year. Um, I mean, I think you'd have your hands full against that team as well. Jay? Okay. You, he, he covered the point that I was going to say. I understand. It was a young buck still growing, and he went up against the game. So that's that's a different story. But the thing I have to add to this is that what happened to 2004 when they came up against the Detroit Pistons, when Big Ben pretty much had him handled, he got stopped by by Big Ben Wallace, and that team got dismantled the following year. So mm-hmm. I don't know, like. I come I in peace. I come in peace. No. Were there too many cooks in the kitchen in that year? Because they had yeah. Gary oh, and they had... Yeah, they had an all-star they lineup. They had Malone. Was, wow. Oh, super on paper. They yeah. were beautiful. I think one of the talking place. points is, uh, I, I, that goes a little bit unsaid, is the loss of Kyle Malone in that series really, really changed the landscape then. I don't think people give the Pistons enough credit. Uh, they look at it more so as maybe Kobe didn't play as well or Shaq didn't play well. But that... that uh, Pistons team really, really figured out how to guard uh, guard the uh, the Lakers. What they did is they forced Kobe to shoot the ball. They would triple team Shaq, get it out of his hands, and after that, they would just pretty much do what I guess happened to the Warriors last year. They would just uh, man up in two players, that being Steph and Clay, and don't worry about everyone else. Make it anyone else, make a play, just guard them too, and you've probably got a good chance of victory. And I think. Um, Full credit to the Pistons. They're, they're a great organisation. And God, that whole team really played as a unit. I, I liken that team to sort of the Mavs team. Not a lot of all-stars, but just a bunch of um, savvy vets who just now play goal and just got it done. Fair point. Fair point. I think uh, I'll come up now. I'll step up to the plate. Uh, this is really home right about here. Are yeah, you boys is... ready? Are you boys ready? Here we go. Game over, I'll myself one. now. First player I'm going to talk about, Wilt Chamberlain. If we're going to talk about dominant big men, Chamberlain would crap all over Shaq. Sorry, Shaq. Oh. Don't come back at me. Ooh. Let's put it this way. Let's know, talk man. Numbers. I'm happy to talk numbers, right? Two NBA championships. He was, he was unlucky in a couple of those championships. Uh, losses. Um, four MVPs. 
should have won more, should have won at least two more in that front. But this is where we're going to get to greatness. The only player to average 30 points and 20 rebounds plus in their career. Only player to have scored 100 plus points, 100 points in a game. That was against the, my beloved New York Knicks. It always has to be the Knicks in the 61-62 season. And also has the highest season scoring average ever. Same year, 61-62, at 50.4 points a game. Now, if you want to talk about dominating the league, this is the guy that dominates the league and then some and then some and then some. Because this guy owned everyone he played against seven foot one inch of pure basketball who moved like a gazelle and the guy was just as powerful as everyone we're talking about about a man playing against boys I mean this guy had more finesse than Shaquille O'Neal and even according to the ESPN top 10 list is ranked higher than Shaquille O'Neal I'm not going to talk about just purely on the numbers basis because, you know, in that um, strong, strong 61-62 year, he did get outplayed for the MVP by Bill Russell. Sorry, you buddy. know what? Still an incredible year. And I'll stop at that because the alarm's reminding me to shut up now. Okay. Rebuttals. Go. <laughs> it's easier when you're a foot taller than everyone, Dex. Put it that way. <laughs> hey, hey. Can't. Can, can't, can't blame him for what God gave him, all right? He was a beast. There's no way he could guard Shaq, Dex. That's just... No way he could compete with that size body. Shaq wouldn't be able to catch him. Shaq would not catch him. <laughs> I think you'd be able to. Dr. Shaquille O'Neal, please don't come after me on the Shooter's Roll podcast. <laughs> podcast made by fans for the fans. <laughs> all right. So, so I'll go. So, uh, so he actually go, RJ. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. The main thing what I'm going to say about this particular player, it's the era that he played in. Men amongst boys. This guy, yeah, he was blessed with the gift, but there was not even a player even close. The closest came later on, probably a little bit later on, was Bill Russell. But apart from that, there was really no competition. He had it. It was in the bag. So my question was, how come he didn't win more MVPs if he was really that dominant? Yeah, he scored 30. Yeah, oh, yeah, he had four. He could have he won six with the little boys. But come on. Bias. What? Bias. Oh, no, I'll, I'll the let's, let's, all right. Let's, all right I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a plus. I'll make a point. All right. The years he should have won, that that – Amazing year in 61-62 where he averaged 50 points a game and also 27 rebounds per game. That mm -hmm. season was incredible. Should have won it. Bill Russell won it that year. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other year he should have won it was when uh, Wes said won it um, in 68-69. He should have won it that year too. But the reason why he didn't win it was he won the previous three MVPs. It's like when that people the get voter fatigue about, team, you know, uh, who, who, who's going to get voted in. Because back then, it wasn't the media who was choosing, choosing the MVP. It was the players. Mm. Maybe they mm. just got sick of the big man. Mm. After it's a, straight MVP. I reckon it's a, a shoulda, woulda, coulda, but didn't. But anyway. <laughs> but Dex, I'll give, you, I'll give you one plus with, with, with Will. The one thing that was impressed, not just with that, what you've, you said just now. But what I was impressed was the New Jersey Nets was actually going to sign him when he was 40 years old to a one-year contract for $400,000. Now, that's impressive because that shows the guy can still play. And he was still quite active. For me, that was impressive as well. I'm sorry, I have to add that in because I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing. And that guy's like long retired, but they were still offering him a contract. So that's, there's, a, there's a bonus for you right there, but I'll still stick to my argument. <laughs> fair call, fair call. All right, we're gonna move on. Let's go, T. Swig that drink. Hold on. <laughs> go. All right. So my first player, I'm talking about his magic, 
Magic Johnson. So let, let's start uh, from college. So he, he won the championship for Michigan coming out. And he, and then he, he, he got drafted. Now, he actually started playing for the Lakers uh, straight away. And in his first year, uh, he won the championship. So coming from rookie year, and in, so coming from a college year and into your first season as a rookie, uh, you win the championship. Also, in the final game for the championship, uh, Kareem goes down. And Magic Johnson has a statement. Uh, don't fear, uh, the magic man is here, <laughs> something like that. And uh, he he basically played. He's a point guard. He played center, and he uh, he yeah he dominated. He dominated the last game to win the championship. So college uh, achievements was uh, NCAA champion. Uh, I got the wrong screen up. <laughs> uh, uh, he he was also a five-time uh, NBA champion. Uh, he was in the dream team. He was 6'9", six, 6'9", nine, six, nine point guard that uh, just dominated the league uh, during the 80s. So he had three MVPs, uh, four times assist leader, uh, two-time NBA stats leader. And we can go on stats, but everyone knows what the stats are. But uh, yeah, he, he did it with so much style. So, you know, I, I call you the magic man because you have a lot much style as he does. Uh, you know, when you're on the court, you're, you're, <laughs> you're basically games after him. So he, the, the game was boring, but um, they, they called the Lakers showtime for a reason. He, he basically gave him pizzazz. Um, he had a lot of uh, no-look passes where you see his leg in the air. He basically dazzled on the court. So that's why I think he's uh, the greatest player of them all. Time. Wow! Right on cue, mate. Right on cue. <laughs> all right, boys. Any rebuttals? No rebuttals. Of no, there is. There is. The there Lakers. is. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll play. I'll, I'll start. I'll start. Okay. I'll call him the pioneer of the point guard position. I'll call him Mr. Showtime. I understand that. He got us all in an hour back in the eighties and nineties. I understand that. All I got to say is magic's magic and he's done well on and off the court too. Um, he's helped a lot of organizations win, especially the Lakers. Um, for me, magic, he's a passer. And, what, and, and basketball, what, what, the name of the game is to put the ball in the hoop. The name he of the game is that. to win. <laughs> oh, he, oh, yeah, he did win. Uh, but he didn't have, uh, he had a, the best record he had was what, 69 wins? I think another another player had 72 wins. I forgot his name was Jordan or something. But anyway, um, so yeah. But I agree, but that's fine. Like he was great. But I got I got that I put him up there with Jordan um, as one of the pioneers and one of the you know one of the guys that really established the NBA and, and gave the NBA uh, you know the flash and the razzmatazz of what it needed. So that's great. But Jordan's still on top. Wheezy. I can't say no to the fellow men praising the Lakers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll, 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 I'll let you rest there. I'll let you rest. I'll let you rest. All I have to say is, is he even the greatest point guard ever? Let's I say right. so. Yes. Let's be, Definitely. If we're talking about point guards, main po job of point guard is to pass. He does not hold the assist record. My boy John Stockton holds yeah. that record, oh, cool, as man. well as the oh, all-time steals record. Due to longevity, say, yeah. Come on. We're talking about the greatest player of all time. I don't even know if he's the greatest point guard of all time. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Rough. Rough, yeah. <laughs> wow, shot's fired. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> How many rings does your greatest point guard have, Dex? John Stockton. Exactly. None, none, none. Silence. Yep. <laughs> Silence is golden sometimes. <laughs> you got as much as you, Dex. Uh, all right, let's go, Jay. You're up. Round two. I am doing the chosen one, LeBron James. So, what makes LeBron great? He makes his teammates better through play. He'll always make the proper decision to win the game. He's a, he's a player that is a top 10, he's a top three, uh, top 10 player in three different categories almost every single year. He's developed a clutch gene. 
ever since he's arrived in the league. Um, he's been forecasted on that mag magazine as the chosen one since even before, when he was in high school. So he was, a, he was a mature player for his age at that time. And so much hype with him in that high school um, era. Um, his greatness is just on and off the court now, as you can tell. Um, I'll expand on that later, but he wants on court, so I'll give him on court. He beat, well, the team with the greatest record in the NBA, the 73-9 and nine Golden State Warriors. Take that jersey off. Um, so it don't mean a thing without a ring. But then Draymond called Durant the following year and said, oh, brother, can you help me? I need some help. And he, and he constantly breaks records for the last couple of years. What can you say about the man? I mean, the guy now dominated the league, uh, and he's the face of the league at the moment. So that's my praise for LeBron as the greatest of all time for this generation. Lots of time to spare. Very good. Jets? No, I agree. Um, I think uh, Jay was mentioning going back from that huge deficit to so the 3-1 against the Warriors. Yeah. I mean, year in, year out, he just performs. I mean, there's been a couple of years where he's just taken a bag of chips to the finals, albeit he's lost, but they've been competitive. And I don't, need, I don't know too many people that can, can do that. Arguably the greatest player to start a franchise with in my eyes. I mean, Jordan is, is the greatest that I think if I were to start a franchise, I, I would definitely go with LeBron, just just based on a complete pair alone. Um, he can pass, he can shoot, he can dominate in defense. But if I were to obviously want to win a final series, I'm, I'm calling up MJ, asking him to put on his shorts, lace his shoes up, and uh, play for my life. I forgot to add in this longevity. The guy had, man, the guy has doesn't seem to slow down. The guy has took care of his body. I mean, he's had, like, what, one injury in the last 17 years. The guy just keeps going. His averages are still pretty much on point. It hasn't sort of slowed down even the slightest way. What can you say about the man? Uh, I think we've... Do you want to go, Dex? Go. Yeah, yeah, I'll go first. I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> his finals record isn't that great. I mean, falling short of the finals... Uh, Choke mentality? Not my words. I've just heard those words. Ooh, that's, that's rough. Against Dallas. He should have won the championship against Dallas, especially in Miami. I have to admit, that one year, that was he mentally checked out. I have to admit, what, I don't know what happened there. But from there, I don't know what you can say. The guy has picked up his game and uh, had not looked back since. But we're talking uh, about the greatest ever. Well, the, the supreme the supreme victory was the 2015-2016 Cleveland yeah. Cavaliers win. Bringing that, back with all that, pressure. that was that, unbelievable. That was First time it's been done. So, and to, that that lineup for Golden State, that jersey that you're wearing was quite good. It was, it man. Was. Yeah. But you know what? No one could beat J.R. Smith, mate. He's he's all over that. Like I'd drink too much Hennessy, man. Um, he played yeah. some good defense the other day on the street, didn't he? <laughs> on his car. Protecting his, protecting his car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, no doubt he is in the conversation as the greatest of all time. T, any final thoughts on the King? Yeah, um, you, you can't argue with that. You know, I'm, I'm a LeBron fan too. Um, but yeah, just just that that uh, Dallas Finals uh, series. He, he, I thought that um, he didn't show up for that. But yeah, you're you're right, RJ. After after that year, uh, he was pretty much um, on point and and became a winner, like two time, three time champion. And yeah, there's there's uh, there's a question mark next to his name, like how many more championships if he's gonna win. And if he wins for LA, and then he, is he is he challenging Mike for for the greatest player ever? So. I guess we'll cross that when we get there. Yeah, yeah. We'll cross that when we get there. Now, uh, Wheezy, you're up again. Yep. Um, so set her up next. So I could get a little bit emotional, fellas. Uh, forgive me. It's hard to see when you lose your God in your eyes, but um, obviously it would be Kobe for me. Um, arguably, or I guess the consensus, 
most likely to replicate Michael Jordan. Um, I don't want to talk about too much that he's done on the court. Obviously, he's a five-time uh, NBA champion, only a one-time MVP, which has um, always been a bit of a hot debate. Um, arguably, should have won more, but it was a little Canadian man and some questionable <laughs> scoring uh, scoring points that went against him. But I think in terms of mentality, he's the closest to the greatest of all time, uh, Michael Jordan. Um, also, I think what we also forget is he reignited international basketball or especially representing Team USA, um, the Redeem team, he spearheaded that, single-handedly won that game against Spain. I'm sure you guys remember the gold medal match when he just refused to lose that four-point play that sealed the deal. Um, and I guess just in terms of, and Jay also mentioned in terms of off-the-court impact, um, you look at shoes. He's the real pioneer of the low tops, which I personally enjoy. Um, a man who was transcending, uh, I guess, what a sports icon should be. Uh, first one to dip into the Chinese market and just even the whole global, I guess, sponsorship. He, he really, really did a great job in that. So Kobe, in my eyes, uh, will always be my favorite player and um, one of the greatest players, if not the greatest of all time. Boom. Well done. Well done. Thoughts on Kobe? Gents? Kobe was the predecessor to Jordan, I have to admit. I mean, on and off the court from, you know, from charisma to um, little small details, he's there with Jordan. So, yeah, I'm going to have to give it to Kobe. He was, once Jordan was gone, he carried that Jordan legacy on. And he even said in the last dance that, you know, I've got Mike to thank for him. And that gracious attitude carried him and, and he had that killer mentality, the mamba mentality as they call it now. So I'll give my props to Kobe. Yeah. If we're doing comparisons, five rings to Jordan, six rings, what do you got to say about that, pal? Uh, you know, it's, yeah, you can't argue the numbers. I'm sure Kobe would like to have had one, a couple of extra, but um, I mean, the memes live on. Five rings. The man against in Dallas just waving his fingers so he can uh, just rock the whole hand up. So I don't know too many people who can do that. Truth, truth. I guess, I guess the debate um, is the first three championships, right? Was he was he the greatest player on the court? Like, you know, we, we, we argue that uh, Shaquille O'Neal was one of the greatest players and then and, and he got to play with uh, one of the best centers, in, I guess, what we see in the world. So... You know, he, he was the best player for two of those championships. I guess that's my rebuttal. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Hmm. He did win without Shaq. So credit to him. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I'm, uh, I, I, I am a Kobe fan. I, I, I like his work ethic. Uh, but is it just a... Um, a Toyota to the Jordan Lexus. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> wow. That's a great comparison. Wow. <laughs> nice. Dick. There's my Jordan shrug. <laughs> all right, Jay, let's line uh, you up. Right, let's go. Second one. All right, make sure I get the right page. Shut up. All right. So my last pick is Kareem Abil Jabbar. So he was a three-time college NCAA champion and also a three, three-time most outstanding NCAA tournament player. Uh, player of the year two times. Uh, or all, all first American team for three seasons in college. Uh, and three-time All-Pac-8. And he's also a National Colleague Basketball Hall of Famer 2007. So this is... This is all his achievements before he actually get he got to the NBA. So let's let's talk about the NBA. So he won the championship six times. He's six times the MVP, two times scoring champion, and he's also the reigning most uh, points by a player. And he he he's on top of the list. We can get down to his defensive. He's eleven time defensive um, selection. He was. NBA rookie selection, first team. 
and yeah, two time was it two time most valuable player in 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 the playoffs. So his record speak for himself, and, and and the Lakers dominated as as my first pick, Magic Johnson. And he's around. He's talking about the NBA, and he's a great um, he's a great ambassador for the game. Like every time there's a champion crown, uh, he's he, he's always uh, the one passing over the championship MVP trophies. Uh, he's also off court. Yeah, he also started in a movie with Bruce Lee, Game of Death, <laughs> where, he, where he's always hide by Bruce Lee. I thought we were talking about encore. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm adapting your your method, RJ, because <laughs> I got a bit of time here. I'm just, I'm just looking time. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that. That's all I am. Well done, well done. He did have a beautiful sky hook. Yes, he did. That's that's the trademark, isn't it? That and uh, his his play, big man in the middle. Championships, MVPs. Uh, still the leading scorer in of NBA all time. history. Yeah. All well. time, all time. Yeah, Not and and for long. Yeah, see, and during that time, um, three point line wasn't always there, so that that was introduced uh, in, in during his career. Yeah, and this yeah. is all inside Skyhook, unstoppable shot. Unstoppable. Well, I don't know if it's uh, it's not the first prettiest shot, but mind you, I think we're looking that at that through the lens of the modern game. But you are right; it's it's hard to block. Scored so many points, all time scoring champ. Uh, taking it to the Lakers boy there, pal. Thoughts? Uh, look, yeah, one of the um, I guess original ponies of the dominant big man with a with a go-to move that much much famous sky hook. Um, great actor, if we can call it acting. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think um, uh, just an all-round dominant player. Played for uh, the greatest franchise of all time. So uh, always no bias. For compass, what's, no bias. Uh, oh, what's this? Oh, sorry. No. Oh. Um, oh, it says Lakers there too. Sorry. Um, but no, no. I think uh, what else can be said about the man? He's a great player and even a great, uh, great, great uh, model off the court as well. Sweet, sweet. All right, uh, I'm up. I think I'm up for the last player we're going to talk about. And I am going to start it now. And I'm just going to sit here and not talk about him. Do you know why? Because I don't need two minutes to talk about my boy, Steph Curry. So I'm just going to wait five seconds. It's very exciting for the viewers, you know. I think you've yeah. got nothing to talk about. And I think the game's over. <laughs> like, All right, here we go. Right. Clicking it on. I'm just going to use your arguments that you've made throughout this whole session. Starting with Jay, the game of basketball is about putting the hoop, the ball in the hoop. Okay. There's no better shooter ever to have played the game of basketball than Steph Curry. No greater shooter, no pure shooter has ever been uh, graced to have played this game. He's won, uh, he's got three NBA titles, bringing the first title to the Golden State Warriors since 1975. That was when he won it in 2014 and 15. Two-time league MVP, six-time All-Star, career 23.5% points per game, 4.5 rebounds, 6.6 assists, uh, mesmerizing 90.6 percentage from the free throw line, and wait for it, 43.5% from downtown. This guy is an absolute baller, shooter, and when we're going to get to that, the reason why he is the greatest of all time is because he has changed the game. No one has changed the game like Steph Curry has in the history of the league. The reason why is no one is using the three-point shot more so than ever because of the way Steph shoots the ball. This is the call to greatness when you can change the game and with Steph he's done that in spades 
And at that point, I'm just going to drop the mic. Good boys. <laughs> I think he wasted a time because he had no more points left. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. Hey boys, can I start? Can I start? Can I start? Yes, please. Go. I've got this, boys. I've got this. All right. Number one. Yeah, put the ball on the hoop. That's understandable. Um, but um, <clears throat> Ray Allen. Um, number one, you gotta have a jump shot. To me, chucking doesn't count. <laughs> number two. Number two. Ch yeah, he changed the game of basketball. For the worse, because now, whoa. now, now, you have centers. You can't even shoot a free throw shooting threes. So for me, yeah, he changed the game, but he changed it for the worse. Now everyone's jacking up. People in the streets, they're all just jacking up, and they can't shoot for jack. <laughs> the essence of basketball is gone. Why is that? If, why is that stressful? That they're centers shooting threes. Him and his uh, splash brother, uh, Thompson, and um, the other half-brother, uh, Draymond. Um, yeah, but yeah. that's a good point, though. Why is it Steph's fault that other people it's can't shoot fault. for shit? Well, that's he like said saying... he changed the game. It was the influence of Steph, but the influence of him didn't has made the NBA nothing but a free-flowing shooting game now. The, 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 the mid-range is a rubbish shot now. There's no more like layups and dunks that is reduced. And hey, let's not forget Ray Allen. Ray Allen's still on top of that list. Until he's knocked off the, the pinnacle, I'm sorry. There's still not the greatest shoot of all time is still gonna be Ray yes, Allen. Let's talk about knocked. that three point list because yes. Steph has got two thousand four hundred and ninety five three pointers. He's coming up on Reggie, who's got two thousand five hundred and sixty uh five hundred and sixty. So he's about uh sixty five three pointer shy. Ray Allen is at 2,973. But how many seasons did Ray Allen play? I mean, Steph's going to catch him in like a year and a half. Yeah, but Ray played a complete game. <laughs> he can dunk. He dunks. He lays up. He does a mid-range. He does the fadeaway. I mean, Steph only tries to dunk recently because he only developed his shoes that can make him, make him jump higher. But anyway, <laughs> um, but that era of basketball promoted the all-round game. But now it's just simply the Steph Jack up three game. That's what it is now. But like, isn't, this the, the, isn't this a the concept of the game evolving because this is the, the movement of analytics. The, the, the three point shot is the most efficient shot to play. Not a long range mid, mid, mid range jumper because that's the most inefficient shot in the game. Isn't this just people becoming smarter in the way they play basketball? And Steph's leading the class. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> uh, excuse me, I, I didn't hear that. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> yes. And I have to agree because I am a shooter, so I'll have to agree to that to a degree. But still, that doesn't resonate with me still for him to be the greatest of all time. He's got he's got years left to convince you, Jay. He's got That's years right. left. That's he's right. Got... And we don't know and we don't know what will happen for the next couple of years. He's got he's got banged up ankles now. So we don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if it catches Ray. If it catches well, Ray, then he had, he had banged up ankles before before he won his MVPs and scoring titles and Yeah, but he still he still has a way to go though. So we'll see if it catches him first. All right. I don't want to talk about it until it happens. Okay. Make sure that we all catch up and drink some tea when when he does catch him. Okay, I'm looking forward to this little afternoon session. We'll and I'll just say to you, look, he chuck he chucks it. He doesn't shoot it. I'll understand. He's a good chucker, by then. He's a good chucker, there, isn't he? He's a good chucker. Yeah, <laughs> Shane Wall would be proud of this chucking. But anyway, um, <laughs> you're a bit quiet there, like a boy. No, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm just listening. I'm I'm just listening. You know, just hearing some um. You know, some, I guess, points being thrown around and just the argument for, for Steph. But I guess, um, on more of, I guess, uh, maybe tangible level, um, how many finals MVPs does Steph have, Dex? He'll, uh, <laughs> he'll get there. I think he'll he'll you're cutting off. Uh, I think it, to be considered the greatest of all time, you, you at least have to have 
one finals MVP. Um, in, t- in, in my view, at least, just to at least have that award showing that you've dominated and won a series. I know um, he's obviously won multiple MVPs, but I think uh, until he gets that sort of monkey off his shoulder that he hasn't gotten just off yet, um, he's he's not the greatest of all time Jets yet. I, I agree with all the points that he's, he's changed the game. Um, one of the greatest shooters, if not the greatest shooter of all time. But I think until he gets that finals MVP, uh, this is a quick conversation. Fair point. Uh, he does, and he doesn't have the stats yet. He doesn't have the accolades. What's, what accolades does he have? What, what, he won the three-point shootout? Okay, keep going. Three yeah, titles. Okay, keep going. Only unanimous MVP. What do you mean? He's got, he's got two MVPs. Yeah. Unanimous. Because there's no one else to pick. And it, yeah, to that's pick right. It. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> the unanimous, unanimous first unanimous, player to first unanimously player win the MVP. The second one closest was Shaq, that year where he won it, but Steve Nash got a vote. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, that sounds great. Anyway. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so, so we're talking down to my other boy, Steve Nash. What's going on? I love, no, no, love, for, no love for Steve. No love. Hey. Uh, no, I like Steve. He's good. He's good fun. Hey, it's my turn. It's my turn, boys. Uh, so, yeah. with Steph, defense. Uh, if we. Every player that we mentioned, right, today, they all play D. They all play D to a level where it's not like just fake defense where Steph plays. You know, I know Steph's improved his game over the, over the years, but he, night in, night out, he does not get the toughest assignment. Matter he does not get the toughest assignment. Yeah, so, and, and, he's, and he's got clay, clay guards, all the, all the point guards. Like, they, they pretty much hide Steph on defense all the time. And then when he tries to play defense, he gets fouled. He he, he commits a lot of fouls. So that's that's my biggest gripe with um, Steph. I'm, I'm a Steph Curry fan too. But uh, yeah, until he, night in, night out, he guards the top point guards, he can't be considered the, the greatest player. Well, again, I'm just going to repeat my strongest point. Basketball is about putting the ball through the hoop more times and the, your opponent. So, I think he'll win any game that he plays. If he plays, defense or if he plays around the world, yeah. We're playing basketball, offense and defense. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the games where they lost? The Warriors lose when, when their threes aren't hitting. And, yeah, and, that's it. And, and they don't lose close games. They lose big. When, he, when him and Clay don't shoot well, they lose big. When, it, when they're called the Ice Brothers. Cold. Wow. Wow. Uh, look, I, I've had a lot of fun tonight, boys. I've had a lot of fun talking talking smack and going through the greatest players uh, to have ever graced the NBA basketball court. Uh, hope you've had fun just as I have tonight. Uh, and to our listeners and viewers, please check out our latest content on YouTube. We're putting up some videos of our past episodes and snippets of uh, the content that we've generated throughout the past weeks and look forward to promoting the game of basketball more in the coming episodes of The Shooter's Role. Also, give a shout-out to our... Uh, 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 I'm out of words now for the debate, <laughs> but, but our podcast on Apple... Um, Apple Podcasts and also on Spotify, Spotify and follow all our social media content on Instagram and on Facebook. It's been a pleasure. You know what? I think the greatest of all time are you boys. Just 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 for oh, the, you know, oh. hanging out with me tonight. <laughs> That's and sweet, man. Back. <laughs> Your That's MVP so in my I'm eyes. Sorry. You're the real MVP. Oh, thanks, KD. <laughs> <laughs> until next time this is the shooters roll podcast made by fans for the fans peace out <laughs>